Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you, Corey. Good morning, everybody. The October 2020 school land board meeting will now come to order. Pursuant to the governor's executive order to avoid gatherings of more than 10 and the governor's March 16, 2020 suspension of certain provisions of the Texas Open Meeting Act, this meeting is being held today by video conference call via Zoom as authorized under the Texas Government Code Section 551 Tech 125. Access to the meeting by members of the public was published in advance in the Texas Register in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act. Any member of the public who wishes to address the board, as Corey had mentioned, please indicate so by the chat section at the start of this meeting or during any public comment period when uh, I allow for it for each of the items. The chairman, that is me, may limit the time available to each individual that offers uh, comments, questions, or concerns. Uh, Mr. Hanga will be attending for items item 2C, 10 through 16, and item number 7. We'll make sure that he's promoted to panelists to um, be available for any questions from the board. Uh, assuming no questions at this time, we could uh, go ahead and begin with number 1, which is approval of amendments from our prior meeting on September 15th. And assuming the board has had a chance to review and no questions or comments, I could entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Motion is made, seconded, and carries unanimously to approve the minutes. Next item on the agenda is approval of the consent agenda. I've been advised that item 2A3 was pulled from the docket prior to the meeting. After the board has had a chance to review and assuming no questions, I could entertain a motion to confirm the consent agenda for the record. This is Michael, I move to approve. Second. Motion is made, seconded and carries unanimously to approve the consent agenda as posted with the changes that I'd mentioned uh, at the outset. Uh, next item on the agenda is number three, consideration action on the performance of an upcoming online oil and gas lease sale. Good morning, I'm Robert Hatter with Energy Resources. And board approval uh, to hold an online oil and gas lease sale on January 19th, 2021. The sale would be performed, as I say, online uh, through energynet.com. Um, staff's requesting approval of 85 tracks for the lease sale. These tracks together uh, cover about 22,500 acres. 26 of the tracks are in the Delaware Basin and 31 of the tracks are in Galveston Bay. Um, staff's recommendation for minimum bonuses be between $100 per acre and $2,000 per acre, depending upon location and geology. Uh, royalty rate would be a fixed quarter for all onshore tracks. And staff's recommending that for uh, the bay tracks uh, that we use the same variable royalty that we've used in the past, between a fifth and a quarter, depending upon the date of first production. Primary terms for upland tracks would be three years. Uh, primary terms for submerged tracks would be five years. Um, and the rentals will be $10 an acre for the for years two and three, and then $25 an acre for years four and five for the submerged tracks. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the board? No questions. Uh, how much of the acreage will be up from Reeves County, would you say, Robert? Well, there's uh, 26 tracks that are in Reeves County. Um, a lot of them are tracks that um, have either been let go in the past, they've been leased in the past. So if we're starting to get a lot of our deep rights back. And so some of them are just deep depths. Um, and, and so I think we should do pretty well on those tracks. Just, we just don't have a whole lot of open tracks left. Oh. And did you hear that uh, Pioneers look at buying parsley? Yeah, I saw that break this morning. A lot, a lot of consolidation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You saw Any uh, questions from the board? Oh, Gil, sorry. Well, I just go say then Concha, you know, all the Midland guys are getting bought up. Concha got bought out by Conoco. Yeah, another big one. Assuming no questions, I could entertain a motion to uh, confirm staff recommendation on online sale in January 2021. 20, so motion to accept. Second. Motion is made, seconded and carries unanimously to approve item number three, 
Next item on the agenda is an update on pier structures damaged by storms Beta, Delta, and subsequent tropical storms and um, hurricanes in 2020. Good morning. Yes, this is Amy Nunez of the Coastal Field Operations. And at this time, we want to go ahead and present a final hurricane season update and recommendation for 2020. Uh, we've provided information uh, originally for Hannah and then last month for Hurricane Laura. And since that time, we've had storms, both Beta and Delta, that made landfall on the Gulf Coast. And they've actually impacted structures in the same area as Laura. So when you take these uh, storms all combined, uh, you know, they, they've had some impacts on peer structures and staff's been out working to identify um, what's been damaged. And since it's all in the same area, it's difficult to decipher what was damaged by which storm. Um, this is mainly in Brazoria, Galveston, Chambers, Liberty, and Orange County. Um, staff's identified about 70 additional peer structures at this time. These are ones authorized under Chapter 33 of the Texas Natural Resources Code. And staff is continuing to identify these structures and they're already working with the affected customers on rebuilding timelines for these. And consistent with our previous updates, uh, most of these are authorized, uh, are residential and authorized with the coastal easement or structure registration. So overall, based on these numbers of storms, that the storms that have impacted the upper coast and the uncertainty of future storms in 2020, staff is recommending that all storm repairs be completed by one year following the last named storm to impact the Texas coast. Staff is also requesting the ability to authorize additional time to folks who need it to perform repairs and that be granted on a case-by-case -case basis as circumstances warrant. We recognize that funding, contractor availability, especially with several of these storms happening this year and other potential storms are some of the factors that can affect the timelines for these individual peer repairs. And I'll be happy to try to answer any questions. Any questions from the board? No questions. Hopefully this will be the last update of this type <laughs> for this year. That's what I was going to comment. You said this is the final one. I hope it's the final yes. one. Yeah, hopefully this will, this will be the last. <laughs> so I moved to approve this, Michael. Second. A motion is made, seconded and carries unanimously to approve item number four. Thank you very much for the Thank you. recommendation for the work on it. Uh, next item on the agenda is number five. Uh, this is Jeff Gordon, GLO General Counsel. Uh, item number five is arises from um, recommendations and decisions made by the Sunset Commission. Um, and I sent you, the board members, uh, an email with some information on Friday. But uh, this, as you may recall, Sunset, uh, as part of last session, did a deep dive into SLB. Um, and we have uh, come back to the board on a couple of occasions to implement or ask the board to implement some of their recommendations. One of the last remaining recommendations here is amendments to the IAC, the Investment Advisory Committee Charter. Um, the, the, what this pertains to particular was a decision by, S, uh, by Sunset directing SLB to adopt rules for the size, membership, and responsibilities of the IAC and also directing SLB to include a requirement in the rules that a majority of the members of IAC must have experience in the management of a financial institution or other business in which the investment decisions are made. Um, and so um, Scott uh, Rorman uh, has had, um, and I have been discussing this for several months, Scott has a very, had, had other um, proposed amendments that he wanted to discuss and bring to the board for consideration. Uh, Scott and I and Rusty have uh, talked uh, last week about those. Um, so that is the draft that uh, I forwarded you all last week to consider. It includes, uh, obviously it includes the, um, the requirement as to directed by sunset, but there are some other things in there um, that uh, Scott has requested in terms of notice and, and things like that. But he also asked, and, and so based on those discussions, I wanted, we wanted to bring everything to the board to consider today. I will, I will tell you, and then I'll turn it over to Scott or Rusty. Uh, we had a slight difference of opinion with Scott, and we thought it best to lay it out before the board to consider. Um, Scott wanted to, is recommending that the commissioner be allowed to, uh, in, to the, for the membership of the IAC to include at least six other individuals, including the CIO. 
Right now, there are four individuals on the uh, IAC, um, and Scott would like to increase that to at least six. Uh, Scott also asked that that number, that there be an equal number of GLO and private individuals on the IAC, uh, and that would include the CIO. And so um, with that, I, I said I would, I'd be happy to introduce the matter. I, uh, there is some discussion that um, I believe Scott wanted to have on this, and I would turn it over to him to see if he wanted to uh, add any points or correct, if there's anything he needed to correct or, on what I said. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Jeff, thanks for that. And Rusty, thanks for working with me. Uh, the first thing I want to say is nothing that I'm proposing is due to anything except for trying to look forward. I have all the confidence in the world of the staff um, and Rusty and his staff and Jeff and his staff and Mark. So there's nothing here except you're just looking forward. So um, it seemed to me that if there are ever any questions asked that it might be good to have um, more outside people looking at some of our investments than just staff members. So I'll, it seemed to, you know, I have voted on things where I don't know much about oil and gas. Gil does, but I don't. So it, it seems that there was, it might be prudent to have some outside people also looking at this uh, other than just staff. So. Rusty, did you want to um, provide some commentary before the rest of board maybe follow up with some questions or comments? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Rusty Martin, Chief Investment Officer. A um, couple of things I want to, to point out to you. Um, first of all, the, the board has never adopted a charter for the IEC. Um, so Jeff mentioned that we were amending uh, the charter. What we're actually amending is a draft of the charter. Um, it has been on the agenda for discussion at uh, two previous board meetings, but it was uh, pulled from discussion for further um, review and comment by Mr. Rohrman. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands there is no official charter that has been adopted by the board at this time for the IAC. Um, the idea for the charter actually came up several years ago when um, there was a, a, a private review, a review by a, a third party investment specialist that came in and took a look at investment operations. And um, that individual recommended that the IEC's operations be documented. Um, there was no recommendation that anything be changed. Um, the, the operation of the IEC at that time she thought was really good, um, but she thought it would be a good idea for it to be documented. So that's where the germination of uh, documenting the IEC operations through a charter started. And that was, that was uh, back in 17 or 18. After that, the Sunset Committee came in and did their uh, review as required by statute. And they took a look at the IEC and added their uh, comments and recommendations. So that's really the, the sort of the historical genesis of the document that you're looking at today. Um, from my perspective, um, the, the current IEC has been working well. Um, there are four members, including myself. The other three are Mark Havens, um, Ryan Carter, and Hector Valle, all of which are GLO senior staff members. Uh, we've been operating that way for uh, several years and everything's been fine. Um, I, I will say that uh, the idea of having six individual members other than myself seems uh, somewhat daunting to me. It is uh, difficult to, to round everybody up um, in order to have a quorum for these meetings, even with the IEC being as small as it is now, it's still difficult. And as you know, the IEC, uh, depending on what kind of investments it's looking at, sometimes has a pretty short timeline, particularly if we're looking at co-investment opportunities. So from my perspective, um, the smaller, the better. 
as far as the number of um, staff versus outside individuals, I don't believe the Sunset Committee really addressed that issue. Um, to me, it's, 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 it's relevant information. Information about the agency itself and its operations in permanent school fund are also are very important to the ability of IEC members to be able to perform. And uh, addressing Mr. Orman's uh, comment about sometimes he's, he feels like he could use, he would prefer um, an outside eye look at some of these investments. I would remind the board that we do have an outside consultant, um, Townsend Group, which looks at our real estate and infrastructure transactions. They do not look at energy, but we have a separate uh, energy consultant when we're looking at energy co-investments that we use. And I would remind the board also that when we reviewed the investment policy last summer, I mentioned that, uh, that I foresaw a change in the role of uh, towns in, in, in the overall operations, investment operations and fund, and that I, I would like to, at some point in the future, uh, pursue the idea of finding, uh, doing an RFP for uh, a, a consultant for each one of the sectors. So a separate energy, real estate and infrastructure consultant, which may or may not be Townsend, but uh, I think that that, that may address uh, um, some of Scott's concerns. So with that, I'll just end, because I could talk about this a long time. But from my perspective, the smaller, the better, as long as you have, it's more about having the right people on there than a certain number of people. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Rusty. Uh, Gil, Todd, Michael, did you um, guys want to yeah. offer anything or have any follow-up questions? Sure. Can I just confirm that in this, I'm looking at this version, um, the areas that are highlighted in red that are in the text, not the comments on the sidebar, is that what is that what um, there's agreement on between Scott and Rusty? Is that what's being proposed? The red line is what's being proposed? The, yes, the highlighted, the six in the word including, those are Scott's Right. Suggested changes. And, and, sure. and for the record, I don't have a problem with any of the other uh, changes that are reflected right. in the document. Uh, and I point out, if, if you don't mind, Mr. Williams, I would point out that the way that that's worded, if you use the word including, mm -hmm. it doesn't work if you have an odd number anyway, because there's you have to have an even number for the word including to work there. Technically, if there's an odd number on the IC, it doesn't work. Right. Why, Rusty, why is that? Well, if you had five members and, and the goal was to have uh, an equal number of GLO staff versus private individuals and the, and the number of staff would include the CIO, then that would mean that there would be, there's no way to have an equal number if there's no, I, okay. a, an odd number of people on the committee. I, I, I just have always seen where committees, boards, whatever, are always odd numbers so that you don't have a 4-4 four, four stale boat. I've always just seen odd numbers. Right, and what I'm saying is if you have an odd number and you okay. and you use that terminology, including that right. it, it doesn't work. No, I understand that point. Mm -hmm. So um, I um, I have I have experience with this when I'm in my private life, my former life rather within Goldman Sachs. You know, we had we had an internal investment committee that oversaw our investments, but we brought in outside people to provide additional benefit and just another set of eyes. So it just wasn't purely staff. I don't have a strong opinion on the four versus the six, and I'm sympathetic to um, Mr. Martin's uh, feeling about being able to get the right people. Um, I'm also not um, particularly sensitive to the excluding and the including. I think what I probably feel 
probably more strongly about just from, a, and again, not a, a, to echo what Mr. Warman said about this isn't a comment about the current team. It's about the long, you know, ongoing, what's the right governance structure to have it, and the, is really to have a transparent approach where it, what wasn't clear to me is that when you, when there is a recommendation that's brought to the SLB board, how that committee voted and, and did, and, and who voted for what, i.e. was it, did it, did it win three, two, but it was all internal staff in favor and the outside advisors were against it, but they lost the vote. That's really not decide, that's really not disclosed in this document. So I'm sympathetic to, to, I guess what's been proposed by the S by the GLO office in terms of four versus six and keeping excluding versus including. But what I guess I'd like to have or suggest is, and I, we welcome comments is that when you bring whatever you bring from the IAC to the SLB, that what the vote was of that ISC is disclosed to the board just to provide additional transparency. Mr. Williams, I, um, it's Rusty Martin, Chief, Chief Investment Officer for the record. I point out that the, uh, on page three. Did I miss it? It's in there already and I missed it. <laughs> we, under minutes, we added language that, that said copies of the approved minutes will be provided to the school and board members. And, and then we'll those minutes, those minutes identify all the participants in the meetings and the description of the presentations and the results of the uh, IC votes. Okay. So it, it should have everything that you just mentioned. Okay, including who voted for what? I mean, it will be, it won't be. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. I'll uh, jump in here for a little bit because, you know, I, I just based on our experience at the land, because I serve, I believe, um, I think in total under statute and const constitutional requirements, six boards and uh, the more effective ones tend to be smaller. And so I just I would lean toward the four um, in the language. Um, my only concern in terms of excluding Rusty or, you know, any uh, CIO in the discussion is uh, the guidance, you know, that a CIO can provide. And so I don't, again, maybe we look at a Goldman in terms of, um, you know, their practice area, but I just think that, and I haven't attended any of the IAC meetings, but, um, but having the CIO there, I think would help to guide and perhaps it's a ex officio role. I don't know, but, um, but just something to consider. I don't know if Rusty or I, so, I know Brian is here as well. I mean, there's some current members of the IC on the call. Oh, uh, well, Mr. Yeah, Commissioner, this is, this is, thank you. Uh, the this that language does not exclude uh, or include the myself as the chairman from participating in the IC. It's just uh, for purposes of determining how many GLO staff members are on the IAC. I would. I'm still the chairman of the IAC. Okay. Uh, so that language yeah, this, doesn't, this is, doesn't affect that. It's just for determining how many GLO staff versus okay. outside members would be on the IAC itself. Yeah, this is this is Scott Rorman. Um, I'm fine with generally what everybody's saying. Um, I don't have a concern about four versus six so much as I was thinking a larger number allowed more staff to be on the committee. If you're going to bring in private citizens, then I didn't want private citizens to weigh outweigh the number of staff people. I wanted it to be generally equal. And we basically have three buckets of investments, infrastructure, energy, and real estate. And it seemed like there should be room for a private expert from each of those buckets to have a place on the board. So, um, you know, it, there's probably other ways to do it. You could have those people be advisors um, and maybe not have a vote on the IAC, but the SLB board gets the advisor's report. Um, so it, it's not about um, the number. Uh, we definitely don't want to exclude the CIO. So if that came across, apologize, but it was about when a when the board makes a vote on um, an investment or a divestiture,
to make sure that we had um, just a, a, some outside private parties with expertise having seen it as well. Uh, this is Michael. I I, uh, I like the idea of of having outside people on the board, but I I understand the challenges, Rusty, that that you're speaking of. And so, if we were to say that we want outside people on the board to mandate it, how easy do you think it would be to fill that role, or how difficult? Um, you're asking me, Michael. Rusty? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I, I don't think it would be difficult. Um, there are plenty of people out there that, that have the experience and they're interested in, in serving. Um, I, I don't think it would be difficult to do that. The, the difficulty is more in, uh, you know, making sure you get the right people and that, and that you can mesh the schedules of the people that, that you have in a timely fashion in the context of what it is that you're looking at and what the associated timeline is. Um, this is Jeff. If I could just add something in here for consideration. The, I, 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 the requirement that Sunset uh, has stated that a majority of the members of the IAC must have that experience, um, that doesn't exclude staff. If we have staff, uh, who have that experience. I just want to make that clear. I think you, uh, and that is not, they did not define what that means. Um, they, quite frankly, I think you could argue, uh, I think validly that Rusty has that experience mm -hmm. um, and would, as somebody with that type of experience, I haven't considered the other members of the IC. So, the, so there, are two, there are two things that are being offered here in these amendments by Scott. One is the requirement that a majority have the more specific experience. The other thing is making sure you have an equal number of outsiders versus staff. And I, they're not necessarily the same thing. I just want to point that out. And, and I'm, I'm okay if the staff has more four votes or four and the outside have three, so long as it's in, and it's included as Rusty's pointed out, the, the board sees the minutes to see how that, how that worked. Because it's the board's decision in the final, the final decision is the board's, so. Right, so it would just help identify if there was disagreement or frankly that the outside advisors weren't showing up and, and the quorum was solely inside staff. So that sounds like a suggestion to have it at seven members, three from the outside and include the CIO for the, um, for that tabulation. Um, that way staff can meet a quorum in the event the outsiders can't, and then you have three outsiders that have a specialization in the three asset classes. No, I, I think just to be clear, if, if we got comfortable that, that there were two outside people and maybe the real estate person also would be one weighing in on, um, infrastructure, um, you always have a quorum because you'd have the CIO, two internal staff, and two outside advisors. So you'd always have a minimum of three. But I guess what I'm saying is that the minutes showed that those two outside advisors, for whatever reason, weren't making those meetings, then you would know that, right? And then you might try to decide, okay, w what's the challenge here in terms of our, in terms of getting that outside advice? But um, I, again, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with four or six. Uh, I, I, I'm going to defer to the rest of the board and to, and to Rusty in terms of the difficulty of getting three people versus two. I do tend to have a bias toward practitioners or experts than versus uh, consultants, just given my own experiences in terms of the level of, you know, the level of um, expertise contained within both shops. But that's just, that's just a bias. This is Michael. I tend to agree with what Todd just said. Uh, I, I'm, I'm good with uh, four plus the CIO, and, and I think it would be good for us to at least try to get some outside expertise on the, uh, on the board.
And Commissioner, if if I may, just for a moment, for the record, this is Mark Havens, Chief Clerk. Uh, as Rusty said, I am a, a member of the IAC, and uh, I think it certainly has worked well. We have very robust discussions there, but I, for one, I, I certainly view any of these deals that are brought to us. I have an experience here with the, largely with the energy sector and I'm pretty familiar with what we do on the oil and gas front. And so I tend to view those investments with a history of the permanent school fund and kind of what we're looking at there. So to bring in someone from the outside with a kind of a wider view of private investments, I think it would be very helpful to our uh, kind of the overall discussion. So I, I, I don't see any problems uh, with that. Okay. So what I'm hearing is uh, an agreement to four additional individuals with the CIO and including the CIO as including the CIO and there'd be an equal number of staff and private individuals, or I guess that, that language would say the CIO excluding. does not count and we're just going two, two and two. Right. If excluding is excluding, yeah. the, be excluding the CIO. Yeah. I can work with that, Mr. Chairman. I make a um, motion to uh, prove that I don't know. Um, do, do, do Jeff, are we needing to have it actually written out so we all know exactly what we're voting on? Uh, or um, can I make well, a motion and you, you pretty well have figured out what we've decided here? It sounds to me like the motion without putting words in your mouth is that uh, adopt the changes as proposed with the addition of four new members and you would exclude the CIO from the uh, from the count of uh, equal number of staff versus private individuals and also adopt all the other changes that let's call them not controversial changes that were also redlined in the document. Yeah, that that's fine. It, it may be easier to say a total of five, including the CIO and two outside and two staff, but write it however you want. <clears throat> Concept's fine with me. So I make a motion to approve it that way. Second. Motion is made second and carries unanimously to approve um, said recommendation, said motion. Um, next item on the agenda, um, or I'm sorry, items number six through nine will be held in executive session. We'll enter into it under subchapter D, chapter 551, section 551, TECO 71 of the government code for discussion, consideration regarding pending or contemplated litigation settlement offers or to receive attorney advice or counsel related items six through nine. Also under sub uh, section 551 TECO 72 for discussion, consideration concerning purchase, sale, exchange, lease or value of real property related items six through nine on the docket. Following executive session will reconvene in open session. Visitors, please remain on the Zoom call as uh, the board members will join the Zoom call following executive session. Board members, you have your dial-in information ready for executive session. The open session of the October 2020-2020, or October 2020 school land board meeting will resume with item number six. Good morning, Amber Long, Asset Management. Staff recommends approval of the sale for the terms discussed in closed session as being in the best interest of the PSF. Any questions? Any questions from the board? No. Uh, Is there a motion to approve the staff recommendation? Okay. I think Michael just made I a motion. Second. Scott just seconded. A motion is made, seconded, and carries unanimously to approve item number six. Next item on the agenda is number seven. Good morning. Uh, Nick Orman at the Office of General Counsel. Uh, staff recommends approval of item number seven under the terms discussed in executive session. Uh, staff feels this isn't in the best interest of the state and the permanent school fund. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, before we entertain a motion, I believe that Mr. Hyenga is on the call. Corey, you may need to promote him to panelist if he has uh, words to uh, yes. to offer the board. Yes, sir, I've just promoted him. And so, he, uh, Mr. Hyanga, you should be able to un unmute yourself and speak as you wish. 
Uh, thank you. I'm just available for questions and I just appreciate staff's help on this. We had, you know, Mr. Orman and I have been working on this for quite some time and it sounds like we're, we're going to get this knocked out, but I'm available if there's any questions, but it sounds like there, there are none. Any questions from the board of uh, Nick or Mr. Hang at this time? I move to approve. Second. Motion is made, second and carries unanimously to approve item number seven. Um, very nice virtual background there, Mr. Hanga. Uh, next item on the agenda is number uh, number eight. Good morning, this is Susan Shigarik with Asset Management. Can everyone he hear me? I lost the video somehow. I don't know. I don't know how, but loud anyway. and clear. Okay, item number eight is an um, application to purchase some vacant land in. Hempel County the file number is SF 16615 staff is recommending approval uh, of the terms and conditions that were discussed in executive session and I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have any any questions from the board at this time is there a motion to approve staff for recommendation? So moved. Oh, second. Motion is made, set, seconded and carries unanimously to approve item number eight. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Nick. Really appreciate it. Thanks for uh, reaching an amicable solution on that one. Uh, item number nine, um, Grayson County. I believe we've lost Anita, Anita Dabney if yeah. this is first. Yeah, Russell, if she's not- Yeah, available, I can uh, make the recommendation. This is Russell May with Asset Management. Uh, staff is recommending the school land board approve the execution of a purchase sales contract and sale of the property located in Grayson County, Texas under the terms and conditions as presented to the board and being in the best interest of the state and the permanent school fund. Uh, can I answer any questions? Any questions from the board? I'll move to approve. Second. Motion is made, seconded and carries unanimously to approve item number nine. Thank you, Russell, and thank you, Anita, for the brief. And final item on the agenda is consideration and possible action on resolution to release funds from the RESPA and other matters in connection therewith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, for the record, Rusty Martin, Chief Investment Officer. Approval of this agenda item would constitute your approval to release additional funds during fiscal year 2021 from the RESPA to the available school fund. Uh, as a way of background, on September 11th of this year, the State Board of Education in accordance with section 43.0051 of the education code approved the transfer of $300 million during fiscal year 2021 from the portion of the PSF that they manage to the RESPA, which the school land board manages with the intent that the school land board would then distribute this $300 million directly to the available school fund during fiscal year 2021. As you'll recall, section 51.413 of the Natural Resources Code authorizes the school land board by resolution to release funds from the RESPA to either the ASF or to the SBOE for investment in the permanent school fund. The SBOE intends to make transfers to the RESPA in $75 million quarterly installments prior to the dates previously approved by the school land board for its currently approved fiscal 2021 releases from the RESPA to the ASF and SBOE. Those dates for, by way of uh, reminder are the 25th day of November this, of this year and then February, May and August of next year. 25th day or the next succeeding business day. When combined with the amounts previously approved by the school land board for release to the ASF and SBOE during fiscal year 2021, the total amount released by the school land board from the RESPA to the ASF and SBOE is gonna be $645 million. 
600 million of that will go directly to the ASF and 45 million will go to SBOE. Therefore, contingent upon the release of 300 million from SBOE to the RESPA during fiscal year 2021, I'm recommending that the amount of $300 million be released from the RESPA during fiscal year 2021 to the available school fund. And this is in addition to the previously approved amounts of 300 million to the ASF and 45 million to the SBOE for a total of 645 million to be, rele to be released from the RESPA during fiscal year 2021. I also re recommend that the additional release be completed in four equal quarterly installments during fiscal year 2021 in accordance with your previously approved schedule of releases, which are quarterly on the 25th day or next succeeding business day of November 2020 in February, May, and August of 2021. I also attached a copy of the resolution and a copy of the letter from SBOE describing the action that they took and also uh, an updated uh, RESPA release history that includes this 300 million and also includes the $875 million that you approved in August for release to the ASF during fiscal years 2022 and 2023. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from the board at this time? I know we're gonna offer some time to Mr. Maynard. Uh, I, I have a quick question just to, uh, and maybe this would be for uh, Mr. Maynard. So the 645 is what's coming from the rest of, um, 345 coming from SLB, 300 coming from SBOE, if I understood you right. And then obviously SBOE has made its own, another separate, uh, distribution. I was just wondering what the total amount going to the treasury or to going to the ASF, if you will, between the two funds, including what you were proposing. I'll de defer to Mr. Maynard on that amount. Yeah, I don't, um, the, uh, are you talking about, of course, now I understand that, uh, that the 300 million that is, uh, that the, you're distributing is actually for the, for the, for the current fiscal year, for uh, fiscal year 2021. Right. In which, um, uh, and I believe that the, uh, so, so I, I guess the question is, is that, you know, what, what is our, our total distribution for this fiscal year? For the, for the year 2021, um, yeah. obviously the state land board is, is already approved 345. You're putting in 300 through, through this mechanism, but obviously you've made your own distributions for 2021 as well. I was curious as to what the total amount coming from the funds collectively is so, this so I, I, I believe that our that on this biennium i think that our distribution for this biennium was 2.2 billion okay and so so for this for this uh for this fiscal year if you and, and i don't remember it you know that if it's split evenly and i'm not sure that it really is but I, uh, but so but it would be about so this 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 fiscal year would be 1.1 billion and then plus you, you add this, this 300 million, and so I guess that gets it to 1.4 billion. Okay, or to say differently, 1.2 billion is coming from SLB for 2020 and 2021 biennium. You're at 2.2, so 3.4 billion plus or minus came out of the total funds managed by either SBOE or SLB for this biennium. Uh, so, okay, so it'd be, uh, yeah, so it would be for, for, for 2021, it would be 1.1 billion plus, plus the 300 million, and then plus 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 whatever y'all's is, uh, right. which, which would be the additional 645 million. Right. Yeah. Okay. So so they would yeah so that would uh, for the biennium then for uh, on this current biennium that gets us to, to 2.5 from the SBOE. Right. Okay. Thank you. I mean, regardless, uh, it's a historic number. It's the most ever released. And, uh, you know, very thankful for the partnership with um, specifically you, Mr. Maynard, for really digging into the details of our portfolio and our staff operations. 
but also Chairman uh, Kevin Ellis for structuring some really productive conversations these past few months to be able to collaborate in a way that we're releasing this historic number um, during a, tough, a difficult time for the state. So um, I don't think you all get enough credit. I don't think we get enough credit for what we do for everyday techs. And so um, I'm thankful for that. Any questions from the board of Mr. Maynard or Mr. Martin? Fully agree. With I just, this is Scott Roman. I just want to say I really congratulate staff for all that they've done to be able to make investments and have returns that allow us to give this amount of money. Thank you, Mr. Rohrman. We appreciate that. Well, Commissioner Bush, if I could just, uh, just make a real quick comment. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so that's, uh, you know, these are, uh, well, and, and of course, uh, I think everybody on, on, the, on the media kind of knows a little bit about the circumstances uh, you know, not not just really about the, the about, about the pandemic situation that we're in, but also kind of the budget, how that budget, budgeting was done. Uh, big, uh, but I think the big thing is is that uh, that both boards uh, answered the call. These are uh, unusual circumstances and unusual times that, uh, frankly, call for unusual action, and we uh, we we did that. And, and uh, uh, you know, Commissioner Bush, we appreciate your partnership. I think at the end of the day, is is that you know we're all working together for the same thing, and um, uh, you know it's uh, you know this is obviously not going to uh, uh, alleviate all of the fiscal you know stress that that we've got going on in the state, but but it helps. Uh, every little bit helps, and uh, so um, and just uh, just in the, just on the side. Um, and, and of course, uh, you, you know, Rusty, I think you understand this, is that uh, when, when we dropped, oh, I think that in a couple of days, we probably dropped $3 billion in value back in March. Um, we have pretty much regained that. Uh, of course, you know, our staff has been working very hard to rebalance that portfolio and, uh, and, and take advantage of, of, of some of, the, uh, some of the, the, the gain potential in the market. And uh, now our, our process is a, is a biennial process. And so we, we, have a, we basically have one bite at the apple right before the, the, the legislature meets. And, uh, and we will finalize that number. But based on, on what we've done so far, it appears that our distribution for this next biennium will be about a, a little more than a billion dollars greater than the last biennium. And so uh, for a variety of reasons, I mean, I, you know, there's differences in, in growth. We have to account for inflation and all those, all those factors. Uh, but uh, the good news is, is that we're going to be able to distribute a bigger number in this next biennium than, than we did the last. And, uh, and of course, that's, um, that's really good news because the legislature is going to have their work cut out in terms of funding public education and, and uh, you know, maintaining some of the gains and that were done in House Bill Three, or uh, this, this last time around, and, and and some of that important work that was done, and uh, and to continue in that. But uh, uh, Bush, we thank you uh, for your your partnership. Uh, uh, Rusty, as always, uh, appreciate your uh, your work uh, working alongside Holland and our our staff as well. Thank, thank you for that, Chairman. Uh, any questions from the board at this time, Mr. Maynard or Mr. Martin? We still also need a motion. I'll move. Second. Motion is made second and it carries unanimously to approve item number 10. Thank you all very much for your hard work. There being no further business before the board, the meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. Great work.